I didn't know we had that kind of fight in us. You know, I was glad that we showed it out there, showed a bunch of character, a lot of fight. Uh, so we're just go out there and, you know, keep fighting every single game. It was a hot day. We are all tired. But uh, we have a community here to watch us, and we can't let them down. How they got third in their district, I'm still trying to find out. Hey, folks, Mr. Bowtie here. Keep banging home that subscribe button on your screen so that way you can stay up to date on all the great local sports coverage not found on TV or in a cheap web stream. And don't forget to hit me up on Twitter at Mr. Bowtie1982. It's fast, it's free, and you're going to make my dogs think I'm the best person in the world. Thank you so much, and enjoy the show. The Sinton Pirates have been one of the dominating baseball teams in the state of Texas and in the nation for that matter the last couple of years. They won the 2022 state championship. They have only seven losses the last three years to the last two years. And with Blake Mitchell, a first round draft pick in the Major League Draft coming up, as well as several other players going D1 ball, they're expected to win another title. But they ran into some issues in the fourth round of the playoffs, taking on San Antonio Davenport. The Wolves are just in their third year of existence as a school, but they shocked sitting in game one of the baseball series. one nothing. Braden Mulkey threw a complete game shutout, and John Mitchell, Bubba Thompson III had the game's only RBI to take game number one. The rest of the series here in San Antonio should be very competitive, and it's going to be a dogfight to see if Sinton can continue their run of dominance or if Davenport's going to pull off the biggest win in their young school history. Let's head to the field and check out the action. Got to control the emotions. Let's go have fun today. Get a food. Well, two, one, two, three. Well, right. There is John Michael Bubba Thompson III. As I mentioned, he had the key RBI and the only RBI in game number one. What was the secret to his success and avoiding intimidation playing Sinton? As it turns out, it's because of his family. I have three older sisters and I kind of just got stuck with it. I didn't really get to choose. Which is tough for having to go up against a team with a few, whole bunch of future Major League Baseball and college prospects or having to be the only uh, boy in a, in, a, in a family of girls. I don't know, they both have their challenges, but I'd for sure say family with a bunch of sisters. Why is that? Uh, you just kind of got to do what they say. You don't really have a say-so in anything. <laughs> As Carol O'Connor would say in All in the Family, those were the days. There is Blake Mitchell, who is a few weeks away from being a pro baseball player, and Braden Brown, who will be one in the future. It turned out one pitcher who doesn't get quite as much attention was critical in deciding who advanced on.
Brown didn't have his best stuff in Game 2, which included hitting three batters, one with the bases loaded, but he limited the damage every time for six innings. Ada Moody came in and got out of one more jam as Sinton won Game 2, 6-5. Davenport left the bases loaded twice early in the game and left a runner on third base in each of the last two innings. The teams were tied 6-6 on aggregate runs, which meant Game 3 would probably be a coin toss. Some fans, though, couldn't stay awake and missed the drama. It was heads, by the way. Aiden Moody kept pitching in the doubleheader, this time into the sixth inning as the starter, limiting Davenport to one run and collected an RBI himself. Blake Mitchell homer to give Sinton a 3-1 lead after six, but Davenport loaded the bases in the seventh, scored one, but just like in game two, left them loaded in a key situation. Rob Thomas induced Jacob Simon into a flyout to right center field to end the game, the series, and Davenport's upset bid as Sinton survived 3-2 in game three to advance back to the 4A quarterfinals. Keep throwing strikes and trusting, trusting your defense behind you, man. I mean, I know that if I throw strikes and they hit a ground bar or something, that my defense will put them away from me. We're trying our best swinging the sticks. I mean, sometimes you just, the ball doesn't fall where you want it to, you know? I mean, you just hit it straight to people. So we're just trying our best to keep putting the ball in play. Game plans can change with hitters, but I mean, each game, just do what you do. Throw your strikes, make your pitches, and everything will go well. It was a hot day. We we're all tired, but, uh, we have a community here to watch us and we can't let them down. Hats off to Moody for, he pitched in every game this series and I mean, you, you saw the dog in him this weekend. Rob, he came into a, a big pressure situation that he's never been in before and for him to come out there still being a really young guy shows a lot of heart about him and he's going to have a really big future. It was definitely challenging this series. Uh, I'm glad we get through it with this team. You know, it shows the amount of fight and character we have. So we're just going to keep pushing through the rest of the year. Taking as many extra bases as we can is always going to be a key point in our game. You know, we're going out there trying to get in scoring position every single inning. We stepped up when we needed it. You know, he's always been there in our back pocket the whole year and now it's his time to shine and he went out there and did it. I'm really proud of you guys. I think we're growing more and closer and closer together as a team, okay? The fun is just beginning, I'm telling you guys. 
The Wolves missed an opportunity for their biggest school victory in any sport in the brief three-year history of the program, but they learned they can compete with the best in the nation. We're just setting the foundation for others to come. I mean, we really like to set an example and set a mark, a high mark, to eventually beat one day and be better next time. But it's just really to have a good group and family to keep achieving these goals and setting the higher marker for others to come. It helps our uh, underclassmen a lot to see this potential that we have in Davenport. And especially this is our third year. We still have a lot more room to grow. Sitton moves on to the quarterfinals to take on Bernie High. The Greyhounds barely survived a three-game series themselves with Robstown, needing a cotton picker late-inning meltdown to win Game 3 12-1 to advance. Game 1 will be in San Antonio Thursday, while the rest will be in Corpus Christi on Friday. By the way, Bernie was the last San Antonio area baseball team to beat Sitton in a playoff series back in 2010. Reporting from San Antonio, I am Bob Euchers understudy, Mr. Bowtie.